the work that Hutchings has been doing, mm -hmm. he has Tesla coils, he has Vanagraph, and he has, mm -hmm. very frankly, static electricity generators. Mm -hmm. Notice that data doesn't have to make sense. Right. Data just has to be truthful. The, the, the truth. That's right. It's more important than proving Einstein right or wrong. Okay, now, now, now his, his data showed everything from a, a chocolate milkshake snaking toward the top of his room mm -hmm. uh, to bowling balls floating in the air mm -hmm. to I, I have all his data and I've been and I, I've been uh, you know following it I am a senior scientist from Lockheed Martin I have been a senior research engineer for Howard Hughes Texas Instruments nevertheless uh, We've been uh, we've been working for some time now in order to determine where the next energy levels are going to come from. We uh, now by that I mean we aren't talking about wind or solar or or even atomic. We have uh, we have we have other formats of energy that uh, that we've theoretically proven that are uh, that are available. Not only that, but uh, there have been significant developments, and many times the things that we look at and call UFOs are really some of some of the developments that we've been involved with. Did, did Lockheed have been involved with? Are these, some of the UFOs we're seeing you believe are ours, the United States military? Well, Area 51 uh, is literally where the majority of the uh, things that we call the black program mm -hmm. were developed and uh, many times sightings would occur directly associated with them. As I conducted uh, tests, every now and then nature would not give us what we wanted, mm -hmm. but it gave us something else. Something else. And I would sweep it under the rug because it didn't match theory. So do you and after a while I said that is not honest. Mm -hmm. That is not proper. Mm -hmm. You have to, you must record the data properly. And, and indeed, once you record the data, then you start modifying the theory. But Einstein's work is only a slight modification of Newton's work, mm -hmm. but yeah, but we 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 do understand that uh, Newton's work has well Newton's work, for example, Newton says uh, um, says uh, says anything that's in motion tends to remain in motion, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay, so I have something. And I'm taking it. I'm taking it around counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And see, it's, and and what Newton said is true. He just wants to go around, and around, and around, and around, and around. This particular thing is called a celt. It is not. It's clear plastic. There's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to take it around clockwise. It says no. I don't want to do that. It's just like my children. I will do it my own way. How did it go the other way? Precisely, a Newton's law. Is that because of the rotation of the planet, or? Well, there's there. Can I try are, that? You may. In fact, first so of all, I'll send it around counterclockwise. Okay. Counterclockwise. This is called this is called a cell. It is celt, C E L T. What's in it? Okay, okay. there we go. Nothing's in it. It's plastic. Okay, now take it around clockwise. Okay. And it says no. I and it goes back the same number of turns you said. Oh, I've never seen now anything go, like now, that. Now go it stronger. I know. See, I'm looking for the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to. If you can use language, you really need to convert it into mathematics. Yep. And calculate what your theory would say that it would do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are doing nothing more than getting huge, huge quantities of mass and see if they can get a. A gravity wave to cause things to move. Mm -hmm. Well, that isn't what it, what we're talking about at all. Mm -hmm. So I uh, wondered if gravity could be uh, 
related to its cousin magnetism. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I found that when I take two magnets together, I have some neodymiums around here that I'm actually afraid of. They, They're they so can, strong. They can, they can danger you. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, you take a magnet, you go to put them together, and go, and they go clunk, right? Mm -hmm. But you take one of them, move it around, and all of a sudden, it doesn't want to yeah, go right. together. Yeah, right. The repulsive. So I got, uh, I had, I ordered one at five thousand dollars a piece, wow. with 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 a quarter inch hole through between both of them and I put a brass bolt and I tightened them down forcing them together mm -hmm. and then I put them together in a thing that looks kind of like a rock mm -hmm. okay and then I got another one that didn't have magnets in it mm -hmm. and uh, Galileo in in all his endeavors he went up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa and dropped the and he dropped a big rock and a small rock mm -hmm. and his buddy down at the bottom kept telling him that the large rock, rock and the small rock arrived at the same time. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the move? And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Well, I went up to in, in the Lockheed Building 501 mm -hmm. by the side of escalators and, and elevators, oh, wow. and I got I got uh, I got I got uh, nine guys that were not educated and didn't have pre didn't have uh, pre opinions on anything, mm -hmm. and I dropped my two rocks, mm -hmm. and, and I said, fall. what I would like you to do. Is I told him what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take whichever one arrives first, get it in your hand, and when I come down the elevator, hand it to me. Mm -hmm. Now they looked identical, except for so uh, and nobody went, knew what was inside. Not, them? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. All the nine times that I tested it, it's as though the one with the opposing magnet field extending out mm -hmm. three feet on each side. I actually measured how, how far, big the field is. How big the field was, and on each side of a rock, the, of one rock, I had a total of six feet. At any rate, the other the other rock arrived first. Which one arrived first? The one the one that had no magnetic field in it. So you were able to cancel out gravity to a certain degree. You were you able like to that? cancel precisely reduce the mass gravity effect precisely by okay. by opposing fields. Isn't that nice? You you bet. And got. Nine signatures and what? I always skip. You, know, you I, did that at Lockheed. What was well, this? Oh, uh, at least eight years ago. This is um, the actual document of Boyd's where mm -hmm. he proved that by altering mm -hmm. the the field mm -hmm. in a falling body, the magnetic field, it reduced its mass gravity equivalent and canceled out the uh, effects of gravity to a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. And he did a 500. A building 500 drop test conducted from a height of 59 feet. Mm. The location is in White Settlement, Texas, and the time was 12:20 p.m. And this was in 1995, December 12th. Nobody yeah. knows this. I know it. This so gravity, mass gravity, is not. Um, well, it, you can alter it. In well, other gravity, words. gravity within itself has to have. Gravity goes through anything that is solid and anything like iron or anything yeah. else. But I, it's, but it has to have a magnetic component, mm -hmm. which may be canceling out within itself. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it got around my rock, it all of a sudden recognized the presence. But somebody, of my rock. Uh, one of Einstein's students tried to merge electromagnetism and gravity, and mm -hmm. he rejected it. But he didn't have an experiment like you. No, did. I understand. I, yeah. I, I know that. Yeah. But, but but see, we you, nature never uses English. It doesn't speak. It doesn't speak any language. But yet it's talking to us all the time. Right. And the key thing is is to identify identify what it's saying. Does Lockheed Martin 
or does anybody possess working anti-gravity technology right now? Or are we still trying to understand how these ET craft are working? Have we reverse engineered the technology at Roswell uh, successfully? Which would mean I'm, some of the UFOs we're seeing now that are silent and hovering. I've given you the Lazor tapes. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as I can talk. Okay. That's good. It's only because I got the Lazar tapes from a white world mm. form. Right. And, uh, but you can't say but, anymore. But, well, people kept encroaching on Area 51, such yeah. that Area 51 is now moved, be moved to Tooele, Utah. But if, here's, here's one thing. I, right. This makes sense to me. If you can cancel out gravity in a falling body, and you can even reduce a percentage of the effects of gravity for aircraft, it would take less fuel, they would be more oh, efficient. Yeah. And they could hover with less energy, and and that much I can figure out. And the edge, atmospheric edge of the Earth will be meaningless. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see a, a picture of a nuclear powered aircraft? Oh, yeah. What's the date on this one? I refuse to say, but there is the nuclear pile that actually flew. That hunk. A junk right there flew? It actually was in the belly, providing... Uh, oh, that was in the belly of that. That's right. It's just like in the belly of a submarine. Providing anti-gravity. So, it's shaped like an aircraft. Well. It's aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> so that we don't think that it's, it's not using its wings. Well, like, I, mean, I you know, get it. It has an energy source, okay? I understand. And it, and it is staying in the... And, and here's... What oh, it, here's what it looked like down inside of the protective. It, it was. And that's at Area 51. No, no, <laughs> much closer than we'd care to admit. Oh, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Lockheed of the contracts here was in the paper this morning. Twenty-seven billion dollars in the last, you know, couple of years. Most of the. The majority of the defense contracts are here in Texas with Lockheed. I mean, well, that's certainly. Much no, no. I, yeah. I, that's why I don't mind having a retirement from them. And here was one of the old-time developments. Oh. Now, I happen to know the guy who put that together. Mm -hmm. how, how far does this date back? March? No, Mach 1.2? I know it doesn't say, but in actuality, it's way, way back. The first of really? we must must be at least thirty to forty years. And you know, he won't say, you know, that it was an alien craft. Obviously, I mean, it could have been something that was ours. But if we have anti gravity, if we've developed anti gravity at Lockheed or um, you know any level, secret level of the Black Ops, you know, divisions of, of research. Oh. Why aren't we using it in the world? Why doesn't the F-117 levitate? Or does the F-117 levitate? Well, the key question from a physics point of view is a matter of, uh, of another force. Mm -hmm. The question is, is, are there more forces beyond the, the four or five forces that we're all acquainted with? Mm -hmm. The strong force the, 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 that's holding... Yeah, the, the strong force, yeah, I yeah, understand that. The strong force and weak force, electromagnetic force and gravity. Well, we we have been under some development recently where the astronomers have begun have begun to to analyze the motion of galaxies apart. Right. And we have identified that indeed the galaxies are being impelled apart. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to say at increasing velocities, the recent data and the better data says that there's still a repulsing force. Well, a repulsing force is an anti-gravity. It's stronger than gravity. Literally. Mm -hmm. Newton says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, yeah, right? right? Well, okay. If that's true, then uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't let me get this thing lost. But it, if, if I let this fall on this carpet, mm -hmm. if I had a concrete, uh, if, it, if it's elasticity mm -hmm. was the same, uh, then whatever, f it, the best that it could do would be to come back to the same height that I drop it from, right? Right. right. And if it came out okay. higher than that, and then I would have violated Newton's law of right. equal and opposites, right? right? right.
Yeah. Okay. I have a. I need your hand. This is a, a sander tube, and you're going to catch these. These are magnets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now do notice that this is copper. Mm -hmm. It does not care about copper at all. It mm -hmm. is not like iron. Uh, uh, the, the, this one just straight through. Right Less on through. than a second. And this one. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four one thousand, four seconds. <laughs> No, that's true. So, that's now, so you're canceling that, out gravity. Well, buy something that cares little about magnetism. The two opposing forces in here. It's a matter of what is the aluminum doing? Why does it care about moving electrons? Right. Similarly, over here, I had have, have aluminum. I find that were Sir Isaac Newton to be alive mm -hmm. after Einstein rather than the reverse. Right. Um, Isaac Newton had a, had a form of mathematics called, um, oh, the binomial expansion, where basically you can take anything that's mathematic, your sines, cosines, even the definition of pi, and you can put them in an the expansion format. Mm -hmm. And if you add them all up, you get the correct, the, the, the correct definition of pi or sine and everything else. Mm -hmm. But but it's usually meant for a binomial expansion. If you really take a Einstein's equation, mm -hmm. it is a binomial it is a binomial expression. Right. It's yeah. a, it, 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 it's Mass a, and energy are equivalent. If you do nothing more than shove that into Newton's uh, series expansion Mm -hmm. You will, and and you multiply it like like Einstein did, you know, by m zero c squared. You multiply every one of the series expansion by that. Mystically, the first term, which is one, when it's multiplied times m zero c squared, is a large force. The second one turns out to be kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, it, one right. half m v squared. Mm -hmm. Not c squared, mm -hmm. because Einstein had v, uh, but the, and the c's cancel. It goes on ahead and basically shows that there are as many as seven significant forces. Really. And the first, if you can include the kinetic energy, it turns out to be the first five we know. Right. The, the sixth, five. seventh, and eighth we don't know. Right. So but, you're saying but we're ta we're taking the expression associated with the binomial expansion and taking a look at it, and it looks like that that indeed there are that we believe that anti gravity is there. That it's one of them. It's one of the forces. One of the. But we have forces that are yet yet to be named. Up here, a picture. Of the of the, the there's a rock up there. Mm -hmm. Next, yeah, I see that. Well, that actually came whizzing past between the moon and the Earth about five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's going to come back again in twenty in twenty uh, twenty twenty nine. Yeah, twenty twenty nine, and then it will come back and just between the Earth and Moon. And it will come back the next time in 2036. So the orbit is decaying. It will collide someplace between Siberia and Africa, and oh, it no. will be a huge impact, yeah. many, many, many megatons. Bigger than Tunguska? Don't know. How right big now, is that? Thing? It depends on its velocity, but it's there. We know it. We're tracking it. Oh my And I God. and I said, and number six, veer its veer its orbit. Notice that it floated above the aluminum. Mm -hmm. I mean, something mystical inside the aluminum was doing something like happened inside of copper. You can't run current through mm -hmm. aluminum like a wire. Yep. And, and, and traditionally, it's, it said it's non-conductive, but actually you're saying it is conductive. Well, something occurred. Actually, what's happening is that it, this only works if it's AC electricity. Alternating current. Alternating current. Okay. Mm -hmm. Notice that this only worked with, if it was moving. In other words, I, when I was uh, when I'm working with this, 
it doesn't care a thing about each other. Right. But when I have motion, something happens. Right. Because I knew you were coming, I again I called a friend of mine mm -hmm. who was a Navy doctor mm -hmm. during the same time period we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Slightly after that, and he all of a sudden was healing a pilot, mm -hmm. a person that had been pilot. He began to tell him a story, and he basically said, one day I was up, I was up in one of the, uh, the, the faster airplanes that we had, and I had something that was a spherical object that, that was ahead of me. And I called back and I said, are there any, are there any friendlies over here? Mm -hmm. He actually took off from a Texas location, Head, uh, headed off that way. And uh, towards New Mexico. And he, uh, he said, they said, well, no, there's no friendlies here. He said, not only that, but he's accelerating away from me, and yet I have the fastest airplane that's been designed. And was it that time was... And therefore it can't be one of us. Well, that was... And he said, well, they said, well, you have the, you have the, you have the weapon on board. It was a new design. Oh. And he said, go on ahead and shoot it down. And so he did. He shot down the Roswell craft. Do you know who did it? He said, don't tell, I didn't, don't give the people my name, nor, nor, nor and give you them, know this nor get, you certainly. He shot it down. He's, he's a very dear, the, the doc, with the, what kind of a the weapon? Doc, the doctor is a very dear friend of mine. What what kind and of a weapon? I don't know. We we have all kinds. Because bullets of, were only fifteen hundred miles an hour back we, then. We we have all kinds of things out there. <laughs> an electromagnetic pulse. Oh, yeah, right. Anyhow, Nikola Tesla died in the Hotel New Yorker on July seventh, coming into the morning of the eighth in nineteen forty three. Freedom of Information Act request. F FBI, FOIA documents reveal that Tesla's death ray was the only defense we had against atomic bombs. And the question is, as these documents reveal, the secrecy around the Tesla death ray, which is a laser weapon used to strike at an aircraft as a ray to short circuit all of its electrical systems, all of the spark plugs, all of the engineering in the craft to actually down the craft. The question is, is the Tesla death ray the weapon that was used, that Boyd Bushman's testimony tells us, to take down the flying saucer at Roswell? Because we know from the dates that the Tesla death ray was being developed in 1943 by the United States government. And the Roswell craft appears in our skies in 1947 in July, that there's plenty of time to have developed the weapon that we shot down them at well, Roswell. Then the individual said that he went and landed at a nearby airport, went over and went and walked into the craft. Evidently one of them was out walking around because there were only three when he was in. Three aliens at that time? And he walked in and they were all four feet and under. But he could see through the walls of the craft from the inside out. Whoa. And it kind of... Translucent and, material. And, and, and the material he was stepping on was spongy, he said. Anyway, it, it, it wasn't... So what about this liquid wall at Roswell? Well, if you will follow your friend and mine, Lazar, he didn't, they didn't find any light bulbs, any electricity, or any requirement for such a thing. Do you think we'll survive global warming? The question is, is if they're alive, the people that are alive will figure out how to escape oh, this I know place what you're saying, yeah. and actually you, every nature wants to tell us how to, how to escape. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the additional four forces that we're working toward, mm -hmm. there should be no problem. Going to Andromeda. Cut it. We can go to Andromeda with one right. of the other forces, not the forces we exactly. know. Exactly. That's it. And we will be able to travel fast in velocity of light, of course. Mm. Well, Paul but don't Dirac... Know, no, but see, Einstein mm. simply said you cannot communicate mm -hmm. beyond the velocity of light mm -hmm. using photons. But actually, Nor, the distance proves that But let's say that, mm -hmm. well, and if I had a blind Einstein, he said you couldn't travel fast in the right. velocity of sound. Right. If uh, a seen blind Einstein says you can't travel faster than the velocity of light. Right, I guess so. But if he if thoughts can travel faster, right, then he would say 
you there's, can't, a, there's another you form. can't travel faster than the velocity of thought. That's incredible. Yeah. Action at you know about spooky action at a distance. Yep. And I, singularity. I, 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 now that's you tied them all together. Mm -hmm. It worked in your mind. Because Paul per Dirac per said in perfectly this perfectly right. When Paul Dirac saw the birth of electron anti electron electron positron pairs coming mm -hmm. from super gammas that he believed he found this substratum to the universe that was non-dual. It, yep. it was pure negative. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if it was really negative. Mm -hmm. It was just single. And he said, my God, if you could become one with that, you could be anywhere in the universe in zero time because there's no resistance in that singularity because there's no polarity. Well, there is another universe called the neutrino universe, of course. Right. Neutrinos. And, and uh, they, we, we know that it's there. And now we, we, we're seeing if, if one of the additional forces matches it. So the neutrino universe is another universe, not just... Not only that, we know that we have... We know that <laughs> what we have is a very... We're about 5%. Mm -hmm. Everything that we see is about 5%. Mm -hmm. And then there's dark matter that we don't see. Right. And then beyond that is about 70% of dark energy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The energies that we don't now have catalog, right. and we don't have a name, and we haven't done critical tests on them, and we're just barely beginning to start operating. Mm -hmm.